from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, heavens. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, we did an hour on this program talking about uh, many of these fast food items that are very large and the controversy that always follows when something new like uh, the Monster Thick Burger or the $6 Burger or the Pastrami Burger comes out and now something called the Country Breakfast Burrito. These things are huge. And there's always controversy every time one of these items is introduced and it just plays right into the hands of the companies that are doing the marketing of the products. And as a marketing guy, I salute them uh, for being successful at doing that. They generate this controversy by making these items the biggest, most calorie-laden, fat-laden items on the market. Then they get responses from all the usual suspects, like the Center for Science and the Public Interest and what have you. All the, you know, heart doctors weigh in on it and stuff. In the meantime, they get a ton of press, so the products sell. They don't only contain hotcakes, they sell like hotcakes, like the McGriddle sandwich. By the way, the McGriddle sandwich at McDonald's is the most successful product launch at McDonald's since the Egg McMuffin. It is the most successful item they have introduced. It isn't just huge physically, it is huge from a marketing standpoint. It is amazing. And if people want to eat McGriddles, then what are you doing? Just step aside and let people have what they want. Why is there a controversy here? You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how we need to make laws to protect ourselves for ourselves. Whether it be, oh, no, we can't have Walmart because then we might shop there. <laughs> you know, if you don't like Walmart, don't go. If you don't like eating fattening food, don't eat it. But stop trying to make laws about what the rest of us can do. We're tired of it. We're going to do whatever the hell we want. Tough luck. I feel like sending clandestine cans of Crisco into New York City, which is made up um, almost completely of hydrogenated vegetable oil, and it's therefore illegal to sell in New York restaurants. Let's just send Crisco to New York, like care packages for people who need their their trans fat. Let's get it to them. God damn it. If people want to kill themselves, I say, have at it. Go for it. But I don't feel that way about wives and girlfriends. I have to be honest. I say that uh, not only I, who make a good living, but most guys who make more money than most wives or most girlfriends, I think a man has a right to say, look, I expect my girl to be in shape. And I expect that uh, if your girl is not in shape, if she is not living up to the covenant, the implied covenant when you got married, that she was going to, you know, be the person you married, I say it's perfectly okay to just bail. And I know many of you have. I know many of you have bailed out on marriages. Many of you have bailed out on 
girlfriends, live-ins. I know many of you have bailed on a dating relationship because women get comfortable, and when they do, they get fat. That's what they do. I read a study recently that said that women get fatter when they get into relationships and men get into better shape. Because instead of being out late uh, at night drinking and chasing tail at night, they're at home and a lot of times they use their time productively on the treadmill or working out or, you know, uh, bench pressing or whatever. Though there's actually a trend, and if you've ever been to Portland, Oregon or Seattle, you've seen this, you know, where you've got a really fit, trim guy walking around with Shamu. But I say that's not acceptable. By the way, I would never get married without a prenuptial agreement, and I say it should be in there. It should be in the prenup. And if she gets fat, you have every right to say this is not what I signed up for. I say you have every right to say that. By the way, if women feel that way and they want to be with a fit, trim guy and that's important to them, they should be able to do the same thing. I have no problem with that. And that's why I'm opposed to marriage. I think that when you get married, you're given a disincentive to be the best person you can be. Because now you've got the other person signed into voluntary slavery. They have chained themselves to you. And therefore, they have no incentive to be the best they can be. They have the incentive to be the best they can be when they're out dating, when they're looking to start new relationships, when they're looking to get laid. People always put their best feet forward. Once they are tied to you, they're under no obligation to do that. How many of you, how many of you have been in a relationship, especially with a woman, in a relationship with a woman who, you know, finally... Ultimately, just simply, uh, you know, throws in the towel, starts getting fat. And honestly, I, you know, by the way, if you love her, no matter how fat she gets, if you're attracted to her, no matter how fat she gets, more power to you. All right, fine, live it up. But I don't think most men are. We get these calls all the time from women going, I can't figure out why you have to make love to me anymore. And I asked, how much do you weigh? 185. <laughs> how much were you when you got married? 120. <sighs> and you can't figure it out? <laughs> I'm wondering how many of you have done this recently. How many of you have dumped somebody because they're too fat or gave them an ultimatum because they're too fat? How many of you have had big arguments over the fact that the other person got fat? I want to hear about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I used to think that guys should treat women, you know, the way that women think they should be treated, but... On a pedestal. Um, yeah. The only and time I put a woman on a pedestal is so I can look up her dress. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our word telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. 1-800-5800-866 is our number. All right. Dwight on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's going? You're coming in a little fuzzy here, but I can pretty much make you out. Really? But, um... Yeah, yeah, you're coming in a little fuzzy here. Coming in a little fuzzy. All right, here we go. I got you now. But, um, yeah, about I'm 23, about two weeks ago, uh, talking to uh, my girlfriend, and I uh, pretty much gave her the whole ultimatum. Uh, she's getting like 10 pounds overweight. And uh, I know that doesn't seem too much, but usually it goes south from there. It usually doesn't get better. It usually gets worse. So I thought maybe I'd... Cut it off at the, you know, cut it off before it got too bad. Uh, How did she react when you did that? Well, at first, I, uh, I mean, at first she wanted me to be nicer to her and sweet her boyfriend and everything like that and not say mean things to her. And uh, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. I understand. I'm sorry about that. 
But um, you know, I'll try something nicer to you. We'll I'll go we'll go out more often. But you know what? Like you've you know you gained a little weight. If so you gotta meet me halfway here, you gotta you know you gotta lose five ten pounds and uh, you know become more sexually active in bed. And then you know for a few weeks after that, I was the sweetest boyfriend to her ever. Everything and then full on me for thinking that she changed. And then just one day out of the blue, like you know what? It's like and uh, yeah, she was uh, pretty shocked there and. Uh, she didn't talk to me for about three weeks after that. So, and we just started talking like the other day again, trying to be friends. Why even but, uh, bother? <laughs> Why yeah. even bother? Who needs chicks as friends anyway? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, well, uh, the yeah, minute you've got uh, a girlfriend again, she's going to say, Who's this yeah, girl who's calling yeah. us all the time? You got to tell him to stop calling. Well, I just started listening to you a few months ago and started to try to make my way up to an A student. So um, I figured, you know what, a better excuse, a better chance now anyways. I mean, I'm 23 years old, just graduated college, and I shouldn't be having a girlfriend anyways. Right! So, especially one who's going south on the whole weight scale. And I I mean, I've played sports my whole life. I'm adamant about it. I go to the gym almost every day, and I just can't, I can't take it. I just I can't stand it, and you know I told her I'm like you know it was, once you start losing weight and do those little things I asked I didn't think I was asking for that much, you know five ten pounds and more sexually active and better. I'm like when when that happens, one happens. Now we're losing you, but I I think that uh, what you're saying is true. What you're asking for is not unreasonable. By the same token, at 23, you shouldn't have a girlfriend anyway. For God's sake, too young. How many times a day do I say that? How many times a day is it true? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Orion on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom Likas. Hello, Orion. <laughs> How you doing, Chief? Good. Good. Yeah, I was just uh, calling, you know. I had uh, divorced my wife for seven years. And uh, one of the main reasons had to do with the uh, weight issue. How much did she gain? Uh, about 45 pounds. Dude. 45 pounds. Now, did you talk to her about it? Yeah, through the years, dude. I tried to, you know, help her out with diets here and there. But she just didn't seem to care about and uh, spent, you know, numerous amounts of money on the uh, weight machines and, you know, uh, valleys, memberships that never got used. Mm-hmm. As I got trimmer, she got, you know, a little wider and wider. And uh, what went from, you know, being able to toss her around and slam her against the wall, now she'll break my, you know, break my back or what. Now, um, but, how did she react when you let her know that it was possible you'd leave over this? Well, she, uh, you know, trying to make it seem like she'd do something. I mean, I really brought that to her attention, and it just really didn't matter. She wanted me to accept it the way it was. There's, you know, there was no other real option, so. Now, how old is your baby? I have two kids, too. There we go. Because you're 27, and you were married at 21, so I know you had to knock somebody up along the way. Yeah, well, I did have kids after marriage, but, you know, unfortunately, that's the way it had to go. So when you finally told her that it was done and you were leaving, did she accept yeah. it? Did she freak out? Why? Uh, she kind of accepted it. I mean, it seems like her attitude just got worse and worse. I don't know if she, you know, she's mad at herself or what, but that bitchiness, you know, never really went away. And at the same token, I started a new company and started making more money. And I figured she'd come around, but it just seemed to get worse. And wasn't, you know, a, a healthy environment for the kids in that sense. Wow. And now, how long have you been divorced now? Uh, four months. Look at that. How's it feel? <laughs> yeah. Now we got more ass than the toilet seats, huh? Yeah, but all coming from different women, not all the same woman. Because your wife oh, had enough, yeah. enough ass for three toilet seats, I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Orion, thank you for that call. I appreciate it. A lot of pauses there. Another one of those calls that was winding down. He'd said what he had to say, 
and was winding down. He was on the old Victrola going from 78 to 45 to 33 to third. So you have to, you have to stop it. You have to give a little radio euthanasia. Kill him before he kills others. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. By the way, notice no women calling in to respond to any of this. It's all the guys. Kyle, hello. Yeah, how are you doing today, Tom? Doing great. I'm going to make this short and sweet. I've got to get going, though. But basically, uh, what I was getting to is um, I had a girl I was dating through um, the business, basically, and um, went out of town for about a good three to four weeks. She came back, and she turned out to be a blimp. I came back, and I told her, you know, you better lose that weight, you know, or else, you know, this ain't going to be happening no more. And uh, went back on another business trip a couple weeks later, came back. She's even worse than before. And I thought I'd be a good citizen and try to call uh, Seawell and let him know that Shamu's got loose in the house. <laughs> Did you tell her that? Uh, yeah, I told her that basically right off the bat, man. She was just, hey, Tom, if you saw, like, a Mona Lisa picture, just put another 60, 70 pounds on that one. <laughs> it was that bad. It was, got, no, it was too extreme, man. I think it exploded into my face. <laughs> what are you doing there, Tom? You've been helping my ass out all this damn time. By the way, at 22, what were you doing with a girlfriend? Uh, it wasn't really a girlfriend. It was just a uh, Bane buddy, you know, outside, you know, a nice little thing to get off the stress out of anger, you know? Well, when, that, when, when a booty call gets fat, you can just move them to later in the evening. Yeah, but I know I like to have it nice and nice and slim, you know. All right, I good. I can't do this, but can you take me out of the Columbine on you? That that is tasteless. Take someone out of Columbine style, but what can I do? Ah, uh, it's just a gunshot. Art has it done Columbine style. Just a just a gunshot will do. There we go. That's Columbine style. Tasteless, yes. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone. Number. Amazing. All these guys dumping the women for getting too fat. No women object to this, which is just spectacular. Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Victor. Hey, uh, I just want to let you know, uh, I've been in Seattle like three times on business, and... Uh, I know it is exactly what you're talking about, these really big girls with these uh, clean-cut guys. And I'm like, you know, in the evening, I'm like walking in the shopping center, and I'm like, man, what, what the heck is going on here? And uh, it's it was every time I've gone, it's overcast and rainy. So oh. I just think that my philosophy is that they're like that because they're covered with clothes all the time. You know, if you go to the mall here, it's like hot, it's warm. So they really have no incentive ever to to really uh, look good because they're always so cold and covered in clothes. You can't even sometimes tell apart the ones that are slightly overweight. Right. Uh, what are. they do in places like Seattle and Portland is that they just wear layers of clothing, you know, sweaters and those L.L. Bean down vests and things, figuring that you'll just think they're layering, that they're not fat. They're wearing layers of clothes. Exactly. But I've spent enough time in Seattle to see the layers come off, and I see what's under there. <laughs> and it's a bunch of heaving, sweaty rolls of fat. That's what's under there. Yep, uh, that's exactly what I noticed. Well, thank you, Victor. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, Jessica on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Finally a female. Hello. Hi, Tom. I huh? just wanted to agree with you. Husbands need to tell their wives to, to quit being fat. That's right. I'm a I'm a one of the slightly chubby ones with a wonderful husband who never tells me I'm fat, who probably should have, and I would have done something about it a long time ago. Well, that, that's the thing. I think a lot of women just get very comfortable. Well, you got a couple of kids and work hard and do all those things, and just becomes not the priority. And well, then I and my response to that, if a woman said that to me, would be, "Where do you get time to eat?" Well, <laughs> yeah, we do do that. <laughs> Now you got more. It looks like you have more time to eat than ever. <laughs> well, you know what? A lot of years and a and a and a lot of you know age doesn't help. You know, of course. Yeah. But you got a wonderful husband like mine who doesn't make a peep and tell you how heavy you are. And you know what? They got to speak up and tell us, or else you know we're not going to get off of our lazy butts and do anything. And now you you're know, not we... blaming him uh, for your lack of motivation, are you? Uh, I certainly am not, but he's a wonderful man who would never tell me otherwise. So for those of the, and I, and I think it's a, 
it's it's kind of an important thing and i and i actually have one of the good marriages and have a good husband and am a good wife and do all the right stuff and my husband's not a one-to-one follower but loves it that i listen to you and tells everyone thinks it's funny but well i think that's great jessica they gotta tell them because they're never (laughs) they're gonna get fatter and fatter that's that's exactly right sarah on the tom like show hello Hi, Tom. Hi, Good Sarah. Long time listener. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to call because I'm agreeing with you. Um, maybe I get it from my mom. My mom is late 40s now, and she's kept her hourglass figure through her entire marriage. She never let herself go. So, um, you know, we always say that uh, we always kind of laugh at the chicks that, you know, are married for a while or with somebody for a long time and then they get all like fat and then depressed. No, how can you don't tell me I look nice anymore? But, you know, you got to get off your lazy ass and... and By the way, I have the answer to that question. What's that? Okay, anybody who ever asked this question, since your husband or boyfriend won't answer it, I will. Ask it again. Oh, when they say, how come you don't tell me I look nice? How come you don't tell me I look nice anymore? The answer is because you don't. Because you're fat. (laughs) And you're fat. Yeah, but I mean, I agree. I'm. I've never had a weight problem, but I mean, most of the guys I meet, of course, are into more slender girls. But I, I would never let myself go, especially when you're with somebody, because when you when you meet them and and you look good in the beginning, I mean, you shouldn't let yourself go just because you're comfortable for that person. You should, you shouldn't try stop putting an effort. I think you should always try to look nice for that person. You should always. Put the effort in. Always, you know. But people, put people stop on, putting in effort. Whatever. People stop putting in effort in all kinds of ways when they get married. They do. It comes from the. It goes from the sexy little lingerie to the big old, you know, t-shirt to bed. Like, I just not into that. It's it's not sexy. It's not hot. I mean, you you want the same attention you had when you first got in a relationship. Do the same things you did in the beginning. That's what I think. That's right. So. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is her telephone number. Cindy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. You know the official greeting of the Tom Likas Show, don't you? Um, kind of. I just... Well, what would it be? Large, I'm sorry? What's the official greeting? Um, I don't know. Hello. Hello. Yes. Because we're on in five different time zones. Okay. So everybody has. So if somebody hears you say good afternoon, they think they're listening to a tape. Okay, yeah, you're right. Well, hello, how are you? And sometimes they are. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well, I've been listening to you for not a long time. Me and my husband listen to you both, and I totally agree on what you're saying about fat chicks, because I actually gained a. To me, it was a lot of weight because I'm short, and um, I took it all off. And now sex is better. We go out more. I think I look hot now. So, yeah, I agree with you 100% that girls should not let themselves go, especially when they're married because their husband wants to see them hot. What they yeah, well, they stop or or just stop wondering whether your husband is going to ch- cheat on you because he is. Yeah, definitely. And I think I'm hot. My husband thinks I'm hot now, so it's all cool. Good for you. <laughs> By the way, why did you get married so young? Why? Um, I don't know. That's, Honestly, that's always was, the worst reason to do something. <laughs> Honestly, the truth is, I was I really loved him. So you could have waited. If he really loved you, he'd wait a few years. Yeah, I I could have, but I guess people make decisions when they're young differently than stupid decisions. Yes, and and you didn't even have a kid as an excuse. No, no kids. We we have our own business, so we're not thinking about kids anytime soon. So you got fat without even having kids? Heck, yes. Can you believe that? I just started. I don't know why. I just started. I was um, at 115, and I went up to 130. Oh, boy. Yeah, so right now I'm at 100 pounds. So I think I look better. Than well, when I, first. I, I hope you do. Keep it up, Sid. Diane on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Great. Great. Okay, here's my comment, and I kind of have a question for you, too. Mm-hmm. My story is I was overweight a few years ago. I would say two and a half years ago, I was overweight. I've lost a lot of weight since then. 
even when I was overweight, I had guys approach me all the time. I met my boyfriend at the time. He's my ex-boyfriend now. When I was overweight, he dated me. We were dated for about two and a half years, three years, and then decided that weight was an issue for him. He dumped me. Now, now wait, let me overweight. ask you this question. Were you overweight when you met him and then overweight plus yeah. 20 when he broke up with you? And he decided to break up with me after. So you were the exact yeah. same weight when he broke up with you as you were when he yes. met you. You yes. didn't gain one pound. Actually, no. I probably gained like 20 pounds, but nothing drastic. 20 pounds is it nothing? What do you mean nothing drastic? 20 no, pounds on a woman I mean, is a lot. Tom, I was really overweight. When How I was overweight like, were you? I was probably 80 pounds over the weight I should be. So what What was your weight when you met him? I was 210, 220. Oh, yeah. So what's five, another two? What's another 20 pounds? Yeah, for someone that's that big, it's not that big of a difference <laughs> because he already took my dad. Now, listen to what else I have to say. Did he, ever, did he ever roll you in flour and look for the wet spot? Dude, don't be a jerk, okay? I'm just I'm being honest with you. Comments. Well, you okay, get so upset. Being, you know what, Tom? Right now, I'm not overweight. That's what's the issue now, okay? But that doesn't now mean he didn't roll you in flour back amazing. then. Yeah. And now every guy, including him, is trying to get with me. And that's the sad fact. That's so sad for him now that he cries to me every single time. But you never would have lost go. you never would have lost the weight if he didn't dump you. You would have stayed the way True. you were. You know what? I probably wouldn't have stayed the way I was, but you know what? You can't even make that comment because it took a lot of hard work. That's not the point. You wouldn't have done any of that. Thing. You wouldn't have done any of that hard work for him. You had to get, be dumped to be motivated you to do that. You learn. You know what? I was young. All right, well, I so he did you a big favor by dumping you. He probably did a good thing for himself. And for at you. At the time, he thought... For me, you know what? I think I would have done it because it's so much work that you can't do it for one person only. He was the reason but you... I started, but the person I am today and now I'm becoming a personal trainer, there's no way I would have had this fitness as a passion of mine just if he dumped me. Okay? That's not the reason. Well, what is the reason? The reason is he gave me motive, but I'm the person that did it. Yeah, but you and wouldn't have done it had he not said, get out. Okay, so my question to you now is, what what do you do with a guy like that when he did dump you and you were fat? And now all those guys that did let go of their girlfriends because they were overweight, physical appearance is always temporary. You can meet a girl that's size zero and a few years later, she could be a size 20. Yeah, well, get, a guess girl what? might have been a size 18, not yeah. a size So five, if she's size zero, size you, you get out around size eight and you say, that's it. See ya, my way or the highway. You can't let go of something so intense, a love that's strong, yes, you can. a relationship. Yes, that's you so can. Strong. Because yes, you can. That's temporary. Yes, okay? but it's not temporary. That what's temporary is you're at 180 today, and maybe in a month you're at 210. I mean, it, the point is, it, it's temporary in the sense that it might go up further, but it rarely goes down. Mm, that's not true. Yeah, it is true. I think it depends on the person. Your weight didn't go down until you got dumped. And you know what? It's been three years. I haven't gained a pound because you haven't gotten a new boyfriend yet. That's not true. I have dated. I do have a you boyfriend did. right Who's now. your boyfriend? He lives with what you? Do you mean, who's my boyfriend? Does he live with you? No, I don't live with guys. Right. Uh, so the point is, uh, so you didn't live with your ex either? No, of course I didn't. Mm, I see. So you just bone them. You don't, you don't live with them. No, I have relationships. I'm sorry. I'm not. Watch a your mouth. This is the radio. I'm you can't sorry. say that word on the radio. I apologize. Mm, come okay. on. Okay, I apologize. By the way, you're American enough to go up to 220 pounds. What do you mean American enough to lose? Because this is the fattest country on earth. Um, where I'm from, there's a lot of fat people, too. Where are you from? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, dear, please. You're anonymous. Nobody knows who you are. It doesn't matter. I wouldn't put my culture out there like that. What so culture? Jeopardize them, too. Right, this is going to be Central America. I'm telling you, it's probably El Salvador, because when they're not, no. when they're from El Salvador, they won't say what country they're from. They always say um, whatever. No, that's not the case. They, Listen, they just talk about their country, and they don't say what country it is. 
When they're Good. Colombian, they tell you they're Colombian. No, I'm not either one. You're not even close, but it's okay. It's Cuban? Irrelevant. Are you Cuban? No. No? It's irrelevant. I'm Middle Eastern. I'll put it oh, that Oh, you're Middle Eastern. Ooh, Plenty of yeah. fat people there, you're telling us. Is that right? Dude, see, this is exactly what I'm They call it belly dancing for nothing. Listen. What? Why do you have to be a jerk? Seriously. I'm a professional. You tell people, you tell people lose weight. I'm someone who did lose weight, so now for Did the he ever roll you in flour and look for the wet spot? Face? That's what I want to know. Did he ever roll you in flour? Maybe couscous. What? what? Just thought I'd check. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be druggly. You've got to be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the evening. Drugly. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. This public service announcement from the Tom Likas Show. Please conserve water. Please. Because remember, when they raise the price of water, you'll have to conserve water. And I won't. That's right. Also, please conserve energy. Because uh, I need to keep my home at 67 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. I got a 3,000 square foot home. And if you guys don't conserve energy, there won't be enough left for me. I'm always in favor of raising the price of energy. That way you have to get served so I can have enough to keep my home cool. Go ahead, raise the price of energy. Fine. Yes. Raise the price of a gallon of gasoline to $8 a gallon. See if I care. I'll be driving and you'll be carpooling. <laughs> We're laughing, but come on. I love these commercials. I saw a commercial on TV last night telling people, I swear this is true, I saw a commercial on TV telling people to save water. I'm not making this up. It was a California commercial to save water. And it was a guy's hand holding a glass of water. And have you seen this spot? And then like at the end of the commercial, they're like saying, and if you don't conserve, and then the guy drops the glass and it breaks and the water spills out all over the place. So they had to waste a glass of water to tell you, remember, save water. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Did you dump somebody or get dumped because of fatness? Let's say hello here to, look at this, boy, oh boy. Let's say hello here to Dwayne. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dwayne. Tom, what's going on, man? Not much, Dwayne. I just had to call in and comment on some of these fat broads here. I mean, they seem to have no self-starting ability, no self-esteem, no self-worth whatsoever uh, uh, until after they get dumped. Um, all along while with these guys, I mean, they just continue to pound, pack on the pounds, and, I mean, as soon as they get dumped, here they are at the gym, 24-hour fitness, all this other crap. What happened to that when you're with a guy? I mean, what's, what's going on with that? Tom? Well, by the way, I go to a gym, and I don't have to mention which one it is, but all the women who are there, save the few usual exceptions, they either just broke up with a boyfriend or they're just going through a divorce. You rarely see somebody there who says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm married. You, you almost never see that. These chicks have no self-worth and no self-esteem whatsoever. That's fine from their value to a man. I mean, why don't they see that and just act accordingly? I agree with you. Hey, take me out, Kobe style. Here you go, Dwayne. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alex. I, I'm a longtime listener, and I'm, I always agree with you, but I can't today. Why not? 
What's wrong with all these guys? Just because the girl gains a little weight, what does it have to do with anything? You get married because you love someone. Not yeah, but you also have to get turned on looking at them. You get turned on when you with them. It doesn't matter about their weight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I, uh, most guys don't feel that way. If I have to look at sweaty rolls of fat, you ever see a sweaty roll of fat when in, inside the crease there's like a little rash, you know, kind of like athlete's foot? It's the same stuff, by the way. That's why you do it with the lights off. But but you can still feel the sweat. You can still feel the rolls bouncing up and down. You're you're doing it for one sensation. It shouldn't matter about the body size. You have to get turned on first. That's how a man's uh, the physiognomy works. I don't really think so. <laughs> All these guys calling up are just little babies. It's just probably the guys that were nerdy in high school that couldn't get, you know, the cheerleader type. Right. Well, the point is, uh, look, uh, as we get older. And I, when I, by older, I mean as we become adults at 21 or 18 or as we work through our careers, men generally make more money. And I think the more money we make, the more we have the right to say, you know what? I deserve to be with somebody who looks good and gets me turned on all the time. So, see, that girl's only going to be with you for the money. Don't you want someone that's going to love you for who you are? Uh, frankly, uh, but my money is part of who I am. My money is a quantifiable statement. It says, here's how hard I've worked. Here's how creative and innovative I've been. My money is part of who I am. What I don't want to do is to have to give her any money. I've been with my girlfriend for five years, and I make uh, over $100,000 a year, and she doesn't ask me for anything, and she's a chubby girl. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be that's, with her than all these That's why she doesn't ask you for anything. I'd rather be with her than these little skinny girls that are only with you for your money. You must have very low self-esteem. <laughs> My self-esteem is really high. I, I, I tend to doubt that. Hers probably I, is, but yours is. I could get the little skinny Barbie type girls, but I'd rather be with the you know. I don't want us. I you know what? I don't want someone who weighs ninety-eight pounds. I want some. I want somebody with uh, uh, breasts and a nice butt. I want that, so but I don't want one hundred and eighty pounds of it. So big girls don't have that? They, they got too much of it. <laughs> more to love. You know, oh, stop with more to love, please. More cushion for the pushing. Stop there you it. Go. Stop it, please. And I'm just going to say the last call. Not Do you Dwayne. roll her in flower? <laughs> not Dwayne, your last call, but the girl, I'm proud to say I'm Salvadorian, so I don't know why you started mentioning El Salvador for the I only said, but she wouldn't tell me what country she was calling from, like what your country she was from. That, that many times when people are from El Salvador and other countries in Central America, they don't say what country they're from. They just say they're from another country or they are from Central America or something. They don't tell you what country they're from. I just think all these guys calling them need to open their eyes and stop going for the skinny type. The big girls need loving, too. Well, I, you know, I don't care if they need loving, okay? It's not my job to provide it. Because rich guys need loving from hot chicks, What's wrong with chubby girls to give love? Because I like hot chicks. There's chubby girls that are hot? No, there aren't. <laughs> You're just looking in the wrong place. No, there aren't. Name one. Name a famous one. A famous one that's big and cute. Right. No, hot. Hot and cute. Um, man. Uh, I can't really think of one. Come on. I've given you the entire entertainment industry. Name one. Mm, uh, there ain't that really many big girls in the entertainment world. Why not? Because <laughs> of shallow people like you. Nobody wants to look at them. No, it's because of shallow people like No, it's you because nobody wants to look at them. Why don't they have fat girls in Playboy magazine? <laughs> uh, because guys like you don't want to look at them. Oh, wait a minute. If there were so many guys like you, don't you think they'd want to sell more copies of Playboy? There is guys like me, but they're just... If there were so out. many of you, why isn't there a magazine like that? Because they're just scared to come out because they're... Oh, just stop it. The, how, by the way, how how big is your girl? She's, uh, she's, I think, uh, 220, 220. 220? She's about 5'6", because I'm about 5'9", so she's... Oh, my God. Tom, she's, pro she's more beautiful than some of the girls I've seen on Playboy, probably. Oh, stop. Stop it. You're just a chubby chaser. Our email address is my name, Tom, at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.